welcome again to our course digital design with Verilog. This is our last lecture in this course. In this particular lecture, we are going to learn about the electronic design automation that runs the VLSI industry. So, if you just look back to the syllabus of this uh, course, what we have learned, we in the first half of the course, we learn the basic fundamental uh, tech, uh, theories that is needed to understand a digital design like switching algebra, number system, Boolean algebra, logic minimizations, those fundamental concepts. Then we learn various combinational design like multiplexer, demultiplexers, adder, multiplayer and various other modules and their optimized implementation. We then also learn Verilog uh, as a hardware description language that is essential to uh, represent any hardware design. Uh, so, we also learn and we also have seen how the basic combinational module can be uh, can be modeled in HDL. Okay. In the second half of the course, we started with uh, basic flip flop, finite state machine, registers, counters, state tables, how, how to do that and then how to do the state minimization and then synthesis of synchronous sequential circuits and also the AOSM charts. And finally, we uh, see, have seen how to develop a RTL design, right? so which consists of a sequential part as well as a, a combinational part. So, given a design, you need to plan your uh, first how many states you need to execute that behavior and then in every state which operation to be executed and then you based on that you develop the AFSM or the controller which will control the data path, right. But combining these two, uh, you will effectively develop a system. But what next? So, you with this course, you have learned the fundamental of digital design. So, now given an application, given a specification, you can now develop a digital system in very low, right. So, you are in that particular state if I assume. So, now if you think about this, uh, you know, this VLSI industry, once you develop this digital system in say very log in RTL level, register transfer level, how that will be mapped to the final chip, how we will get an IC out of this, right. So, this is the process that we should understand and if you are uh, familiar with that process, so if with your fundamental of digital design, you will able to develop ICs uh, on your own, right. So, if I did uh, ask you the question what is integrated circuits, it is a, uh, it's a uh, circuits that has million of transistors, right. So, if you look into any applications, uh, in nowadays uh, we are basically in a we have uh, in the domain we are surrounded by a lot of electronic systems, right. We are uh, familiar with all the hand, handle gadgets, right, uh, mobile, laptop, uh, digital computers. In any domain, you think about a uh, vehicle, it has a lot of uh, electronic component in it. You think about a satellite, you are fa sending certain mission to Mars, uh, moon, all those things consist of uh, huge amount of electronic circuits, right. Now, if you uh, look into this uh, electronic circuits, fundamentally you have transistor behind this, right. And if you look into uh, many uh, the modern processors, uh, it has billion of transistor, right. For example, I have noted down certain processors here which is uh, very well known to us has consist of billion of transistors, right. So, now uh, what is there in this uh, processor fundamentally you have an uh, processor architecture which again has written in very log, right, um, which consists of a data path and then you have a memory and uh, this uh, bus communications and all, but finally it is a digital system. And finally you get an hardware uh, which is uh, a physical processor which is very small size, right, maybe uh, 3 centimeter square 3 centimeter, right, 3 centimeter into 3 centimeter. But how do you get, convert that particular uh, this uh, system that you have developed in Verilog uh, into uh, physical devices, right. So, that is possible with the evolution of electronic design automation. So, what it does, it is basically a software uh, which converts a design that is uh, explained or expressed in a higher abstraction level into the lower abstraction level, right. So, let us now try to explain how things, uh, how things stand here. Physically, your uh, IC has billion of transistors, right. But if I ask you to write a Verilog code having a circuit representing a circuit having 
this transistor level it is not easy right it has billion of transistor so writing that code is difficult so what we usually do as a human being we basically try to represent the circuit in a higher abstraction level so what is the next higher, higher abstraction level is the get level representation right think about you have AND gate which has an equivalent represented in using say some few transistors you have on OR gate which an equivalent uh, representation in terms of few transistors and so on. So, instead of writing or expressing my circuit in terms of transistor now what I am going to do is I am going to represent my circuit in the gate level right and there will be a software which will automatically convert my design which is represented in gate level in automatically into transistor level design. Right. This is what is EDS software, right? And this is what is called physical synthesis, right? So whenever you have a get level netlist, it will convert into transistor level design. But it also does certain more things, uh, which will give you a GDS layout. I'll talk about more about this physical synthesis. But inherently, it is kind of get level to transistor level conver uh, conversion, and then placing those transistor in a particular given area and making the connections, right? So this is what is physical synthesis. But even uh, you try to write your code in gate level, there are too many, uh, the circuit is too big to represent, right. So, what we usually do is we try to express our design in one more higher abstraction level, right. And that abstraction level called register transfer level, right. So, what is that? Uh, here we express our circuit in terms of transfer of value between registers in every clock, right. We express our uh, uh, describe your design how the registers of your design getting updated in every clock right so this is what is called register transfer level to give an example so suppose you have uh, written that you have a register a b and c and you are writing always at the rate passage of clock a equal to p plus c right so that means every clock whatever the value of register b and c that will be added up and that value will store in a right so this is what is register transfer level and now we think about this adder which is represent as such as a uh, carry look ahead adder then I can uh, automatically convert that register transfer level design into a get level design where that plus will be represented as a get level design of a carry look ahead adder right. So, this process called logic synthesis where a register transfer level design is automatically converted into a get level design ok. So, this part is called get level uh, logic synthesis. We will again talk about what are the sub steps of this logic synthesis in more detail. So, in this design industry uh, most of the time people starts uh, the design at the register transfer level. So, they get the specification then they develop their own architecture and write their architecture in a in the HDL like Verilog or VHD right and then they use this software uh, uh, logic synthesis software or physical synthesis software to get the layout. Okay. So, this is the conventional process. In top of that in recent times there is a huge interest in uh, bringing your design in more higher abstraction level right. So, instead of writing your code in register transfer level what if I write my behavior in a behavior specification like say C, C++ or in python and there is a software which can convert my C, C++ code into register transfer level design right. So, then effectively you are writing something which in software level right C C++ has no harder description right. But uh, your software will automatically convert them into hard to hardware which will be represented in terms of uh, in, 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 in register transfer level right. So, that particular process is called high level synthesis. So, this uh, so in, uh, you can think about that I you write and C code and you will get a layout uh, which you can fabricate and then you will get your IC right. So, this is what is the process uh, called EDA electronic design automation. So, without this electronic design automation the whole VLSI industry would not survive right because this gives lot of benefits you do not need to write your uh, circuit in transistor level you write your code in even at C level or in RTL level and you will get automatically converted right. And this converted is very short time, right? So it will reduce the overall design time of your IC. And since you are writing your things in higher abstraction level, the possibility of making mistake is less, right? So the if you write your uh, design at the higher abstraction level, there will be chance of less error in your design, right? 
and then the tool automatically convert into uh, RTL to GDS rather if you can think about C to GDS nowadays and also it has a huge advantage of design space exploration which I want to elaborate more right. So, what is design space exploration? You think about uh, you want to make a design of some specification right. If I ask you to write the very log code you will think about this and you probably take 7 days to give a design which has certain performance parameter right. It may have some, some area values right and some it achieves certain clock speed and say it achieves certain throughput and so on right. There are many various parameters or say it has some power consumption. Now, if I ask you to you write another version of the uh, Verilog code which is the area optimized where area will be less than the current one right or I ask you to develop another RTL where it is the highest uh, it will give you highest frequency right it will be the fastest design it is possible or say I ask you to develop uh, another design from the same specification which has the minimum latency. Right. So, it has different different uh, objective and you can have developed di different different circuit which achieve uh, that particular object. So, how will you do? You have to kind of start kind of from scratch right. You cannot just modify little bit in the design and it will become area optimized or it will not give you the maximum frequency right first clock or say minimum latency. You probably need a completely different architecture to achieve that performance. So, doing this, this process is called design space expression where you try to explore the different designs and you choose the best one right. So, this process at the register transfer level or GAT level is very, very difficult. But once you try to do with uh, at the C level, you can automatically what I will uh, I, I should rephrase here that if you try to do manually it is very, very difficult, but with the EDA software uh, softwares it is much easier right what will happen the tool automatically try to apply different optimization in, in implemented within the tool try to uh, get a different architecture in quick time right which is possible in a month can be done in hours with the electronic design automation software ok. So, this is what is this electronic design automation and without that you will not able to get your actual IC right. So, once you get this layout what you have to do you have to do the fabrication that means you basically fabricate your IC and you get a physical chip. After that you have to do the packaging and you have to test to see whether any manufacturing defect then you get the IC and you sell it to the market. Right. So, this is the overall EDA flow which consists of high level synthesis, uh, then uh, logic synthesis, then physical synthesis, fabrication, packaging test to get the IC. What I will do now I will go each of the step in high level and I will try to explain what is happening behind the scene in this softwares. Let us start first with high level synthesis. As I mentioned high level synthesis takes a C, C++ code and convert into register transfer level design. So, what it happens here? If you just try to see this high level synthesis process in nutshell, you have a very big C code where there is a loop, there are a lot of operations that are happening. So, you have to understand that the entire thing you cannot do in one clock right. So, you have to first decide that how many clock you need to execute that behavior. Then uh, you decide how many resource you need to execute that. Do you need 2 adders or 3 adders? Uh, do you need 4 registers or 20 registers? Right? So, there are uh, you try to develop identify how much resource you need to execute the behavior. Right. So, first step is identifying number of clock you need that is called scheduling. Then you identify how much resource you need in terms of memory and functional unit. This is what is called allocation. Then you bind the operations of your uh, behavior into the op functional unit of your hardware that is called uh, binding. Also you map your variables arrays to the memories that is also binding. Right. So, this is called binding process. And finally, you make the data path connections. So, you have say 4 registers and 2 FUs and whatever the operation is going to happen in the uh, in, in this uh, FU, you have to make the connections right. Say for example, if A plus B is happening in FU 1, so you have to make a connection from A to the left input of the FU and B to the right input of the FU right. 
and then if uh, the same particular FU is, is used to do multiple operation in multiple clock, then you have to do time division multiplexing of the input. Essentially, you have to put multiplexer at the input of the FUs, right. So, this way you have to make the connections from the register to data path, similarly from you know, sorry register to the function unit and from the function unit to the back to the registers. Right? This is what is called data path generation. Once your data path is ready, you know that in this particular state, this data path is going to op execute this operation. So, to execute those operations, what is the control signal you need to perform that operations in the data path, right. So, this way every clock state you need to identify what is your control signals, what will be the value of your control signals to execute a particular set of operations, right. So, this is what is called controller generation. So, in a nutshell, if you follow this process, you will able to convert your C code into a RTL level description consists of a data path, which consists of set of FUs and set of registers and their interconnections and a controller, which is nothing but FSM, where in each state it set a set of control signal to the data path to perform set of operations, right. So, this is what is called RTL and this entire process is called high level synthesis and there are commercial tool, academic tool and open source tool as well on the high level synthesis which can convert a given C code into RTL. I will move on, now I will talk about what is logic synthesis. So, at the uh, after uh, if you convert a C code into RTL or you can write your own RTL, right. So, you have a register transfer level description, now you want to convert that into get level. Right. So, the first step is very simple, suppose you have a adder and your objective is to make a very fast uh, adder, right. So, your clock delay should be less, so you will try to use a faster adder, so you will probably co choose carry look ahead adder, right. On the other hand, so if your op objective is to minimize the radio area as and uh, so then you will not choose uh, the carry look ahead adder, right, which has more area as compared to repel carry adder. So, probably you are going to choose repeal carry adder. So, based on your mm, objective, you can choose an efficient implementation of a particular RTL component like adder, multiplier, multiplexers, the decoder and so on, right. So, this conversion is called translation or logic translation, which is very simple. Next, so now you have entire thing in get level, okay. And we have already seen that Carnot map mesh minimization and various uh, minimization thing where we try to optimize a logical expression, right. So, once you convert these things into get level, I can represent each of the output as a Boolean expression uh, over the inputs, right. Then we have to apply various logic minimization technique to get a efficient version of the implementation, right. This is what is called logic optimization. And the last step is where you try to convert your uh, logic design into a particular architecture, right. So, this is what is called technology mapping. What it does here? So, you think about the FPGA uh, target where we what we do? Uh, we know that in FPGA you have LUTs, you have DSPs, you have RAMs, right, which you have been taught in the previous lecture. So, now you have a design which is in get level. I want to con map all this gates into the this uh, LUTs, if you have a big array that I want to convert into a uh, VRAM, if you have any multiplayer I want to uh, convert into a DSP, right. This is what is called technology mapping for FPG. Similarly, if you think an about this ASIC architecture where you have a given technology library, right. In that library probably you have a very few set of gates. You think about a NAN45 library where you have only NAN gates. So, now if you have a get level design, every gates of my design say it is has AND gate or gate X or gate everything, I have to convert or I have to write it representatively using NAND gate, okay. Similarly, you have uh, say memory which will be mapped to flip flops. So, in ASIC target, we have a technology library and I to rewrite my circuit in terms of the uh, gates that are available in my library, okay. Once you do that, uh, by doing this conversion, you probably introduce certain uh, uh, redundancy in your design and you can, you need one more level of optimization, okay. So, once you do this, you will get a optimized get level representation. So, this is the entire process is called logic synthesis, 
which I will explain uh, with uh, the steps with one examples right. So, for example, in your RTL you are writing this at the rest process of clock A equal to B plus C. So, this is what is your addition. So, based on your design choice you can have different kind of adders you will choose the one you want. Say for example, you want to make a faster adder you have chose the correct carry look adder. So, this is the architecture corresponding to the carry look adder, this is the architecture corresponding to ripple carry adder and so on right. So, what I can do I can replace this by an equivalent hardware representation of this right in the gate level. So, this is what is called logic translation. Then I as I mentioned uh, you need to optimize your uh, Boolean expressions and we have already learned various techniques like Carnot map, Wine McCloskey, but those methods are not scalable. In practice usually you apply heuristic based approach espresso right and also we have multi level optimization where your multiple expressions we try to find out common sub expressions which is we have already discussed in this course like kernel extractions and all and then finally we try to identify uh, a optimized circuit this is what is the entire process is logics optimization. And the last step is the technology mapping if I give an example from the FPJ domain suppose you have this uh, gate level design what I will do uh, whenever I found a registers I will map them into flip flops and I try to find out a subset of subset of the circuit and I try to map them into LUTs right. So, for example, here I have used LUT 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 to cover all the gates I have right. So, this way uh, it is kind of covering your gates with a LUTs and you try to map these things into with the component that is already there all already uh, only there in FPJ right. So, this is what is called technology mapping. Once you map your uh, uh, RTL into uh, gate level, you have a gate level design which is technology mapped. What is the next step? You have to uh, convert that particular gate level design into transistor level design which is again a very obvious step the logic translation. For example, you know that how to represent an AND gate with transistors, you replace the AND gate with those transistors and so on. Right. So, this way you can easily convert your design into transistor level design, but there are much more things to be done in the physical synthesis process. What is that? You think about that you have now 1 million transistors and you have given an area, right. So, suppose you have given an area, you have to place all these 1 million transistor in this areas, okay. And also not only that you have to also make the connections between them, right. So, you have to make this all the transistor you have to place here and then you have to make the connection according to the design you have developed. So, this process is called physical synthesis and you cannot do this uh, uh, by taking one transistor at a time right, there are too many transistors to be placed ok. So, usually we uh, follow the divide and conquer process what we do here we try to break your big design into small small component right and try to uh, place those block first in an area right. Suppose you have given this area right and you have to place your uh, 1 million transistor there. So, what I will do? I will first partition my entire design into say some sub blocks right. Say for example, I partition my block into uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 right. So, I divide my design into 5, 6 sub circuit right. So, I just uh, partition the things and I try to place the 6 blocks here such that they are fit in. So, th you, you can understand that given a area layout it is uh, it's not easy to place all the partition here right. So, you need to find a way so that it all this uh, sub block can fit in a particular given area right. Once this happen I will now recursively do the same process within every sub block. Right. So, for example, I take this block and I try to say sub partition into 3 uh, sub block and try to place within this area right and then again I will probably consider this block and I will break into another say 4 sub block and I try to place within this sub block and this process will continue until I reach to a very small portion where I can manually or physically automatically can make the connections right. So, this entire process is uh, called physical synthesis. So, this is what about partitioning and then floor planning. So, floor planning means that how do you uh, place this 
blocks in which order in which place right so that I use how all blocks can fit in a particular area and then once you make this placement you have to make the connections right. So, it is not about you break means there is no connection between these two block right once you have cut a circuit you have connections between two sub blocks and you have to make the connections and that process is called routing. Routing has two uh, steps global routing and detailed routing. So, this has been followed. So, I will just uh, briefly talk about the entire process now. So, first cut is the divide and conquer is the you partition your design right into component. Say for example, you have given this design and say I decided to cut here and here. So, I create three partition right. So, once you cut in some places, uh, uh, so what will be your objective? You want to make sure that the number of wire crossing from one block to another block is minimum because once you place this block, this connection you have to make physically right. So, your partition objective will be to make a cut such places that where the number of wire is crossing is minimum right. For example, when you cut here you find that there is one wire, two wire, three, four. So, I have to make four connection between these two whereas, if I cut some other places say if I cut say in this places then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine connections I have to make right. So, this way uh, you should have some algorithm that will identify what will be the best cut where the number of wire crossing one partition to another partition is minimum right. So, this is the first step where you partition. Then you place those partition in a particular given area right probably you know that what is your chip size and uh, you know the area. So, you want to put those blocks in that particular area and this placement this is called placement placing those part block in a particular given area. And this is also very important where to place right. So, if you make a good placement then the wire, wire length will be minimum right. I will try to explain here suppose this is your block 1 and this is your block 2. If you place these two block very nearby places then the wire length will be minimum right. And say suppose you place this block here and the other block is in very far away all this connection will be lengthy right. There are four connection between these two blocks. Right. So, this wire length will be large and whereas, if you place them side by side the wire length will be minimum. So, it is not about only partitioning placement of the block should be such that the, the two blocks that have lot of over uh, connection between them they should be placed side by side or very nearby places so that your wire length is minimized. Okay. So, this process is called placement. So, I just give an example if you try to place all these uh, gates in a particular area say if you make uh, uh, this this placement total oil length is coming is to 10 right this is 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 the connection is co considered between the blocks right whereas you make this order the same area where i'm assuming this each square is corresponding to one gate right if you make a different placement where you place 1 3 5 6 uh, 8 4 and 2 7 in this order wire length coming is 12 right. So, same circuit same number of partition block same area just having a different placement can increase your wire length right. So, the your placement problem try to um, minimize your overall wire length needed to make the connections between the blocks right. So, this is what is called placement and there is one more picture. So, if you initiate if you make a very bad placement it is it create lot of wire rights and if you have good placement you can see the number of wire is much less here right and after this happen then you make the exact place connections and this connection will not go over the block right they will be uh, they will go between the blocks. So, if you have blocks like this the space between the blocks will be used for the routing right. So, this part will be used for detailed routing. So, as I mentioned once you place the blocks you know how wh what are the connection you have to make say for example, you have to make a connection from here, you have to make a connection from here, you have to make a connection from here and so on. So, you identify uh, this part and you see wh uh, in through which this wire will go right. You decided that it will go through this block and through this block right. You could have uh, think about that this connection could have come this way also right. You can make like this. So, then it was, is going to use this part of the area, this part of the area right 
and then this part of the area, right. So, global routing determines uh, exactly what are the uh, what are the spaces through which the connection will be make the uh, you will actually make the connections, right. This is what is called global routing. Once you decide that your detail routing will exactly determine the exact place uh, exact connections, right. So, for example, if you want to pass two wire here, they should be in different track, right. So, they should not be in the same line. So, then they will over they will overlap, right. The, so, it is kind of think about the two layers, right. One is vertical layer and horizontal layer. So, whenever you make this connection, this is not uh, crossing this line, right. So, vertical connection happening like this and this is my horizontal plane, right. So, there is no overlap between them. But in a horizontal plane, I should not put uh, two wire in the same row. I have to make them in two different row if there are overlaps between them. So, once you make the global routing, you know how many wire will cross in a particular uh, channel and then based on then you identify how many row you need, right and then you make the exact connections that is always called detail routing. So, once you does this and you keep doing it recursively, right, you will go inside this, you do the same process, you go inside this and do the same process, you will break it again small block and do this, finally, you will get the exact placement of each transistors exact connections of all transistors together, right and this is what is your, your GDS, right. This information will be now be fabricated and you will get the IC, right. So, the next process is fabrication where you physically make this IC which is basically uh, you know the metal oxide semiconductors. So, you have a silicon layer and then there is a semi silicon dioxide layers and so, so on you have a physical factory where you do this maxial connections, right and then you will get your physical chip. Uh, once you develop this uh, chip, this is the EDA process, right that you do high level synthesis, logic synthesis, then this uh, physical synthesis and then you do fabrication, you get the physical chip. What are the other important aspect uh, associated with the EDA process? The next important uh, factor is verification. So, what is verification? You basically physically check wh whether your circuit or is working correctly or not. So, there are many kind of things where you can verify. One is like uh, you say you convert your C code into RTL. You just check whether your RTL is functionally equivalent to your C code or not. Similarly, you convert your RTL into gate level, you physically check whether your gate level design is functionally equivalent to the RTL or not, right. So, this is what is one level of check. You can also check certain things whether it uh, uh, is there any uh, other timing violations, is there any power uh, power uh, constant violations and so on. Right? So, there are many other things you can also uh, verify right. So, there are maybe other uh, uh, like you try to check the reliability, you can manufacturability, uh, uh, then uh, then you try to parasitic parameters so many things you can check and in the verification there are two specific technique one is simulation and other is formal verification. In simulation what we do you have certain test cases you run your design right and you see what is the output coming from your design and you compare with the actual or golden output correct output. If they are matching that means your circuit is working correctly. If uh, it does not match there may be some problem and then you debug and identify what is the problem. Right. So, this is the simulation, but you understand in a design there may be millions of possible input. So, you cannot simulate for all possible input, right. So, that is why simulation process is not always com complete, but this give a good confidence that yeah, if you, you say if you run for 1000 test cases and it is working fine, most likely your circuit is implemented correctly, right. There may be some corner bugs which uh, may not be covered by simulations, for that you need formal verification. Where we try to mathematically prove that your circuit is uh, equivalent to certain uh, previous design, right. So, your RTL is functionally equivalent to C code and so on. So, uh, this in this formal verification we usually do not need any test cases, right. So, there is a mathematical formulation either by, by satisfiability or model checking or translation validation or equivalence checking through which you mathematically prove that your design is functionally equivalent, ok. So, there are a lot of uh, research a lot of knowledge they are behind this verification. Next is VLSI test, what we do here? We manufacture the IC, 
and we bring the IC. Now, in this IC, uh, which we already the circuit functionality we have already verified using simulation or formal verification. So, we already we are confident that the functionality was correct, but during fabrication there may be some manufacturing defect, right? A common uh, defect like two wire may be short circuit, there may be a stock at fault, right? So, stock at means it some value is always assigned 0 no matter what is the input coming, right? Or no, some value is stuck at 1 no matter what was the input, right? So, this kind of uh, manufacturing defect uh, can happen as a result uh, your circuit even if your uh, functionality of your design was correct, but your chip will not give, give the correct output, right. So, this is uh, the process called test where you physically check whether your IC which is fabricated is functionally correct or not. So, there is again a huge research uh, behind this you try to identify what are the test pattern you need to check whether your circuit is working correctly, how to identify stock at fault, how to uh, generate test pattern and there is a concept called ATPG automatic test pattern generation, there is called built in self test uh, and there are also designed for test right. So, where we try to insert certain extra functionality in your design so that you can actually test the internal component of your design right. Uh, so, very common thing is scan check. Again, this is a huge uh, domain which uh, can be studied independently. The last but not the least component is the security which is uh, very prominent in current times and I will try to explain that right. So, in earlier days uh, every design house there have their own fabrication lab ok, but now uh, but this fabrication process is very very costly only few uh, big company can afford that right. What does this imply? It implies that you need to f develop your intellectual property or the IC which is very very confidential to you and you do not want to reveal the internal architecture to third party that layout you have to give it to the fabrication factory which is a third party right. And they can just take your layout and they can construct your net list and you can get it your IP right. So, this is what is uh, the IP stealing right where your intellectual property is still by somebody and they can use it for some other purpose. There is one one more concept called I, IC over building uh, or IC over production what happens? So, you order say 1 million they produce 2 million right and uh, they give you 1 million back and 1 million they sell in black market in very less price right. So, this is also another security concept that means there may be another problem because you give your uh, the IC to the test facility right. So, what they can do they can take the IC and they can uh, do this uh, depackaging they just remove the packages then they some do some imaging uh, do some analysis and they identify what is your actual layout right and from there they can construct the net list. So, even if they do not have the direct access to the layout even from the IC they can do the reverse engineering and get the netlist. Once they get the this uh, netlist they can uh, use uh, illegally right. Similarly, in the synthesis tool also um, there may be some ROG employee they can just get your IP and they can they have a direct access to your design right and then they can use it uh, illegally. So, because of this uh, globalization of this IP IC design flow uh, this all the security concerns come right. So, you must think about having uh, developing your IC where this IP piracy is not possible right. One of the very important technique here is like watermarking, logic locking where you basically lock your design such that even if you get this netlist you will not able to use it until I give you the key right. So, the circuit will only work for a given value of a key and that key bit is maybe say very large 200 bit 500 bit and so on. So, you will not able to use that right and there are many other uh, techniques available which uh, can stop this security threats uh, in this IC design flow ok. So, in a nutshell EDA has four arm the primary one is the synthesis where you convert your design from high level to low level automatically you have the verification that ensures that your synthesis process is correct. You have test which checks whether your 
manufactured IC is working correctly, there is no manufacturing fault and the security which makes sure that there is no IP piracy, reverse engineering and other threats to the IP side chain. Okay. This four independently a different research area and lot of uh, research going on in this individual areas. I will just try to highlight uh, this uh, semiconductor industry. So, if you look into 2023, this is uh, I have copied from this source. So, almost 576 billion dollar market, right? it is a huge, huge industry, this uh, semiconductor industries. And this EDA is also play a major part in this part. So, in 2023, it is around 13 billion dollar industries, right, and it will continue to grow because we need more chips. Okay, and this also continue to grow because uh, the use of electronic uh, devices has no end. And if you look into this EDA market in India, almost 20 percent of uh, the EDA software being produced in in uh, Asia Pacific, particularly in India, right. So, we have lot of opportunity in this EDA domain in India. And the key players of EDA is Cadence in Opsin Siemens and uh, they almost hold the maximum portion of the uh, EDA and they provide the maximum EDA softwares across the all companies they develop ICs. Okay. Career opportunities as I try to mention that uh, this involves uh, two trend, one is uh, this design house who try to hire expert architectural engineer who understand the design very well. There is another uh, domain where we need EDA experts and this EDA experts are uh, develop synthesis tool, develop verification tool, develop test softwares as well as uh, develop various security checking softwares, right. And there are a lot of big uh, uh, semiconductor industries, they have quite a lot of people uh, with this background, right. So, there are a lot of opportunity in this domain. And uh, I just try to highlight here again that uh, you should become an expert in this domain. So, you should go for higher studies, just having a basic digital design knowledge may not be enough. You should master or do higher studies like PhD in a domain like say VLSI test, VLSI verification, VLSI synthesis, VLSI security and you have uh, a lot of opportunity in the industry. There are also uh, postdoctoral uh, possibilities in uh, top tier universities. You have lot of R&D position in industry, specifically the name I have shown here. Also, you can you know, become a faculty in doctor institutes across the world. So, in this uh, domain, you you need obviously uh, good coding skill. You should be very good. Uh, should have a very good coding skill. You should have strong knowledge in data structure algorithms. You should have uh, good knowledge in digital design, which you'll get through this particular course. And also, you must understand Verilog, harder description language like Verilog VSDL. Okay, so if you uh, process this, you have lot of opportunity. So I just want to conclude this particular course with uh, this uh, uh, just so highlighting this Indian Semiconductor Mission. Uh, in this particular, our government of India is uh, committed to develop IC in India, and they have already decided to have three fabrication facilities, uh, two in different part of the country. And uh, with this particular initiative, uh, we definitely there will be lot of opportunity in this particular domain. So, learning this domain, uh, becoming an expert in this domain may be rewarding career in future. Okay. So, with this, I uh, conclude this particular course. I hope you have learned uh, the basic concept of diesel design and that should uh, help you to grow in this particular domain in future. I wish you all the best. Thank you for learning this course from us. Thank you.